Yeah, hello, my wonderful people, viewers, and subscribers all over the world. You are going to hear directly from the horse's mouth, which is the Prime Minister of BG, Simon Eba Njoko, the BG Prime Minister. Uh, this one uh, is an uh, update on Biafra declaration uh, on 02 12 2024. So, this one is called a town hall meeting of different uh, categories of. Uh, Biafra officials and also the member of the Biafra parliament and other patrons. This is where they had a meeting on X. So I'm bringing it to the doorstep of my people for you to understand the meeting that had been had on the night of uh, today. That is uh, uh, yesterday night towards this morning. So make on just listen to it, digest it. Um, make sure you share this video, please. It's a one-hour video, so please be ready because this is a long meeting, town hall meeting, you understand? So a lot of things have been discussed and I would like you to be part of it so that when you are spreading the good news, you know what to spread and when you argue, you argue with him. some vital points that are going to record or are going to hear from the horse's mouth and all that dignitary that I speak uh, vehemently on this very particular matter. So please listen to it as we proceed. Make sure you like, share, comment, and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos. Oh yeah, let us go there. Welcome everyone. Today's emergency press briefing on the update of the declaration of Biafra come 2nd December 2024 by the Biafra government prime minister and the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Biafra, Mazi Simon Eba Njoko. Prime Minister, you're welcome to the stage. Over to you, please. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, dear friends all over the world, listeners and ladies and gentlemen of the press. I greet all of you this evening from my location. I have come to this space this evening on emergency briefing as we approach the declaration of the restoration of independent state of Biafra coming up on the 2nd of December. There is a need for Biafra to be updated at every point in time. My fellow Biafrans, under my administration, I told you people that the next phase is to take Biafra to the global stage. Today, we have achieved that. I am here to inform you that the Biafra discussion is now on the highest level of international stage. And of course, it is being discussed globally. The recent reportage by a highly respected institution in the United States is an evidence of what is to come. The recent report by the ORB from the United Kingdom Institute also is an evidence of the feat the Biafra government has achieved within two years. I am telling you that everything happening now is happening just within two years. My fellow dear friends, a lot of you are supporting the struggle either negatively or positively, and a lot of people don't actually know what freedom fighting is all about, other than supporting what we are doing on social media, and many of you who are supporting are not even sure. So it has become imperative that as we are making this feat, preparing ourselves for the historic day in Finland, we have to also educate our people on exactly our roadmap to independence. My fellow Biafrans, we are declaring the restoration of independence of Biafra. And a lot of people will ask, what does this declaration mean to achieve? The declaration, just like every other declaration of independence of any country, only literally, see this stage. Since the birth of the Declaration of Independence by the United States in 1776, with the U.S. Declaration of Independence, these have had at least two interrelated objectives just like every other country and this objective remain 
the delegitimization of the existing host state, today Nigeria, that rules over the ceding territory over Biafra, and the legitimization of the new emergent state, Biafra, which is ceding from existing one, Nigeria. I just want to be putting it in elementary understandard or elementary standard level for everybody both educated and uneducated to understand where we are going and what we are doing and exactly what you are supporting. And this particular declaration involves a lot of things. Involve listening of grievances against the city state or declare or the state that is declaring the independence, injustice that they have committed against them, harms suffered by the population of this emergent state of Biafra. And today, my fellow Biafrans, like I said, I am here to give you the update. Biafra Republic government in exile and the Biafra Republic government in homeland, the de facto government, has set up a declaration committee, a declaration drafting committee that has now taken it upon themselves to start working on listening our grievances against Nigeria. It is going to be political grievances and, of course, other grievances about three different type of grievances that we have against Nigeria. This is the world standard of the independent declaration. So the Biafra government have constituted a committee called the Declaration Drafting Committee, which are currently working on listening our grievances against Nigeria, the injustices that Nigeria has meted against us, the harms we have suffered under Nigeria, and of course, many of these grievances will be well detailed. And it is going to come like a book, because it is going to be history that everybody will read why we are doing what we are doing today. So my fellow Biafrans, this has been the standard way of delegitimizing the existing state today in Nigeria and delegitimizing the new state which is going to be Biafra. I want to draw your attention or your memory to the 1776 UN declaration. The new state is presented as the only remedy, only remedy, today Biafra will present this new state of Biafra as the only remedy to the listed grievances that the drafting, that the declaration drafting committee are going to list in a book. Because like I said, our grievances are endless. So it is going to come in a book form. However, in the process of the solution of a country like USSR, and of course the former Yugoslavia from 1919 onward a number of federal and sub-federal units abandoned the objective of delegitimizing the old state like I said our problems are peculiar Nigeria is a very complex country and we have found a solution how to deal and exit from Nigeria and believe me if you are not supporting this government you will regret it because we end up dragging you to freedom and then we give you condition. Now, state in their declaration or act of independence, why it is difficult to establish the reason which this state did not delegitimize the existing one on their declaration. Because some of these states were no longer perceived as a functioning state which was capable of asserting its legitimacy to rule over the ceding territory. This is apparent from the foundational constitutional charter of the Republic of Slovenia issued at the same time as the Declaration of Independence which in its preamble note that the Slovenia no longer functions as a law governed state capable of resolving the current problem. My fellow Biafrans, this is exactly the same thing happening between Nigeria and Biafra. 
Nigeria is no longer capable of resolving its current political and economic crisis. And that is one of the reasons Biafra is exiting because Nigeria has failed to resolve its insecurity, terrorism, and all manner of political crisis, economic crisis. Nigeria has shown that they are in no, in a, you know, incapa incapacity, they are incapacitated and they are not capable of resolving this current problem and Biafra has a solution. Political and economic crisis in the case of Slovenia, their chapter of 1991 preamble actually stated exactly what we are going through today, the inability of the government as a then to resolve their political and economic crisis. Moreover, this federation had been ruled by their respective communist parties. These parties and their leaders were held accountable for harms and injustices committed to the population of CD state. And in the Biafra and Nigeria, we will make sure that we held Nigeria people accountable for the injustices and the harms they have committed against their friends from the time of 1967 or even beyond that to this present day who will hold all of them accountable from Gowan to Abbasanjo to every living Nigerian that has contributed in the genocide against our people we are going to hold them responsible it is not happening because there is no representative of their friends there is nobody who summoned courage to represent Biafra people, speak to Nigeria in a language they will never understand until now. I have taken that responsibility. These parties and their leaders were held accountable for harms and injustices committed to the population of the city state in the state of East Slovenia and all of that. However, by the time of the Declaration of Independence were issued, these parties have been removed from power and were effectively dissolved. In a sense, therefore, the grievances against this communist rule state belong to the past or the present, the recent past. And we are no longer relevant when CD state declared their independence. In our own, Nigeria against Biafra, it is going to be different because those evil government officials that committed this crime against us are still at large today. And the government is still in power. Nigeria government is still very active, killing our people in Biafra land. So we are going to make sure that we hold them very, very responsible for all the killings you see today happening in the South East, East and South to South. In Oklahoma community, Odi, massacre, all of them, we are going to list all these killings and we hold them responsible. One could just argue that the whole stage that would have been target of the delegitimization through a list of grievances had already lost their operational legitimacy. And that's exactly the tactics that the Biafra government is applying today. We are expecting that as we are declaring the restoration of independence of the of Biafra, we will make sure that we reduce Nigeria to ground zero in Biafra territory through our actions from the Biafra Defense Forces. In consequence, the declaration of independence of several federal units and later of some federal units, such as Kosovo, for example, of these two federal states, focused uh, in some cases exclusively on legitimization of the new state, legitimization of their own state because there is no need for them to delegitimize the existing state since they have already failed. This was achieved by announcing by announcing or establishing state institutions. My fellow Biafras, a moment.
All right, please, uh, Ralph, can you confirm that you can hear me? Sonny, can you confirm that you can hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you, sir. All right, where did I stop? Uh, I was uh, you, no, you just said that I'll, I'll, I'll be right back, and that's what I heard. I was all right, right, okay, all right, okay, thank you. Because uh, I think I have some, uh, my battery is down, so I just yeah, put it on now. All right, thank you very much. All right, so, as I was saying, is the issue of Kosovo, for example, in some cases, is Kosovo focused on legitimization of the new state? And this was achieved. Kosovo achieved their own independence during, this, uh, during their uh, declaration Announcing by announcing or establishing state institution that we're taking over the state functions of the old state. And that's exactly, we have actually done that. Biafra government has actually established all state institutions, both in the homeland and from exile. We have actually, we have actually superseded every country that have ever, ever declared independence. We have superseded all of them. We have done what no country have actually done. We have government in the homeland, de facto government. We have created 40 United States of Biafra. We have defined our map, undisputable. We have also created the government in exile. We have already established liaison offices all over the world that will later become the, um, uh, the embassies of Biafra. We have done, no country have ever done it in the history of freedom fighting. That is how far we have gone. And this measure is very necessary because Nigeria is a very complex country and we needed to do something extraordinary, which we have done. And that is the reason you are seeing the attention that we are getting from the from the uh, uh, from from uh, DC or Washington DC from the United States and other part of the world because you can't have this particular achievement of the Biafra government today and everybody is ignoring it. No. They have predicted Nigeria break off for many years. It never happened. And after the prediction, no reasonable, very serious individual is coming up to do something. Now, they have seen that, yes, Simon Epa and his government is more than serious. And they can be taken very seriously. People have been watching, decision makers have been watching from the side and observing our activities for the past one and a half years. And today, I believe, they are summoning the courage to do that, which is right. And what is it? To stand by the truth, by giving their voices for the independence of Biafra. That is what you see happening today. And we must applaud them. They have done the right thing. And those who are still waiting to see another crazy move from Simon but before they can give their voice, we will get them at the end of the day. My fellow Biafrans, the modus operandi and the pattern of the Biafra government today is something that Nigeria can never ever comprehend. Kosovo achieved this independence by establishing state institution that we are taking over the functions of the old state. Or by announcing the new state commitment to several internationally sanctioned principles. Exactly what the Biafra government have done today. We have been announcing the new institution establishing our ministries as a commitment to several internationally sanctioned principles, policies and the international organization. This declaration of independence were apparently expected. To legitimize the new state of Biafra in the eye of other world powers or other countries. My fellow Biafrans that are listening to me today, many of these countries that have fought for their independence and they got it by declaration have gone through many obstacles. And we are also going through many obstacles which we actually have defeated. This kind of legitimization of the new state in a declaration of independence often culminated in a request or appeal to other state and international organization 
to recognize the independence of the new state. Exactly what Biafra is doing. But you know, all the approaches we've made so far, all the contact we've made so far, we are just creating awareness. We are not expecting anybody to recognize us at this point because the declaration has not been made. It is after the declaration has been made, after the self-referendum has been counted and we we'll have official result, declaration will be issued. After the declaration of independence, you can now begin to call to the people that you want to recognize that new you have. Now you have recognized, you have declared your independence. Uh, sorry, I'm speaking Finnish. <laughs> I mistakenly speak Finnish. I'm sorry about that. You know, <laughs> we have, we have, uh, you know, we are the, the language is part of me. So uh, I just speak Finnish now. So sorry about that. So it's to inform the countries that we have declared our independence through the mandate given to us by Pierre France, of which over 50 million has voted for us a referendum. You can't ignore that. You can't ignore that. You can never ignore that. So, by this, many countries that have done what we are doing today, some of the analysis from experts will ever remember and inscribe the Biafra pattern of independent and declaration to the history book. In view of all the strategies of delegitimization and legitimization, that is something that you must understand. The three sub gene calling me should please stop don't call when i'm live there are many major three important principles that i would say in the declaration of independence the grievances declaration the institutionalizing declaration and the commitment declaration. These particular three principles, I would say, subgenres of the Declaration of Independence of Biafra is being worked on, as I speak to you today, by the Biafra Declaration Drafting Committee. And you must understand You must understand that we are one million steps ahead of Nigeria. That I must tell you. If you do not know today, know that we are one million. Before Nigeria will make any move, it is the move I have made six months ago. So I, I we are very, very far. Like very, very, very far ahead of Nigeria. Now, the prime example of this declaration can be found in the United States Declaration of Independence of 1776. And even during the Biafra Declaration of Independence in 1967, it was only few grievances that was listed only some grievances that were listed during the Biafra Declaration of Independence. Today, we are adopting every grievances, listing them against Nigeria State. That has never been done in the history of Biafra until now. I want people to understand, especially those illiterate who are on the side of the IPOB Nigeria. You know, the kind of confusion that we put into them is very amazing. You will see the people supporting the drug lord Nigeria Tunupu shouting Simon Ekpa go and die. This is that. You will see the IPB Nigeria shouting Simon Ekpa is working for Tinubu, is working for Nigeria government. <laughs> Have you ever seen any confusion like that? 
Have you seen any confusion like that? Why the Afonjas are crying that I am destroying every plan of their ogas in Nigeria, within the Nigeria state? The IPOB in Nigeria, they are shouting and working for Nigeria. <laughs> Why Nigeria is crying? That is the highest confusion. They don't know what is going on. Because they never believe that Nigeria can be challenged. You know how they address Nigeria? The most populous country in Africa. The biggest economy in Africa. The giant of Africa. The this and that. The evil entity is going down. They never believe that Nigeria can be challenged until today. Nigeria terrorist army never believed that Biafras can actually volunteer to, you know, risk their life to defend others. They thought everybody loved money. They thought every Biafra want life. They want everybody want to live. They never believe that people can actually sacrifice their life for others. Nigeria never believed it. But today, it is happening. Volunteers of the Biafra Defense Forces are sacrificing their life for others. And this is unimaginable to the Nigerians. They never believe that a day like this will come. Where people can actually give selfless service, where people can become patriotic, where you can see people dying for what they believe in. And it is very, very surprising to the Islamic Nigeria state. I'll give you an example of this declaration, even the recent one of Donetsk Act of 2014, Luhansk Act of 2014, this declaration named violation the whole state committed against the city unit, including human rights abuses, act of genocide, discrimination, and breach of agreement justifying their call for international recognition or on remedy or a media ground. That's exactly what the Afrans we are going to do. Our own is more and worse than whatever Luhansk and Donetsk ever experienced. We have experienced appetite in Nigeria against the Afrans people. We have experienced genocide. We have experienced discrimination. We are victim of all the crimes you can think of. And that is exactly what the drafting declaration the drafting committee are working on. And these particular grievances that we are listening in the declaration is going to justify our declaration on the 2nd of December 2024. And again, after that, we will move a very aggressive campaign for international recognition for a media ground. I want the Afrans to understand that you can't, what exactly foundation have you laid in the past for the Afrans to come? Nothing. Are you going to just say, UN, come and give me freedom? Come on. No, without any foundation, without organizing yourself? No. The dead Buhari told you that the Afrans, if you want freedom, if you want freedom, go and organize yourself. And people did not actually understand what he said. And he himself did not actually know when he said it. I watched him. Of course, then I was one Nigerian. I looked at this man, Allah. <laughs> I said, don't worry. The day I will join this Biafra struggle, you will know what you have said. How many of you remember when they were interviewing him? Oh, uh, you, uh, the army were killing Biafra in the city of Abba. And he said, you don't want to watch the video. If they want to, if they want to uh, do something, they should go and organize themselves. Did you remember when Buhari, that Buhari said it? Today, go and inform him that their friends have organized themselves. Like never before, like no other country in the past, we have organized ourselves. We have a government, we have all the institutions of government functional. We have a map, we have state, we have everything, including Lazen offices all over the world. Tell them we have organized ourselves. It is time and we are going to visit them very soon. My fellow Biafrans, I want you to understand that the reason the Biafra will be declared in a foreign land is because of the hostility and the terrorism of the Nigeria state. It's because that opportunity will not be given to us without people getting killed. 
So we are going to adopt the best available options, which is the government in exile issuing declaration where every state in Biafra land will be represented. And there's going to be delegation. And of course, it is not only that we are declaring Biafra independent in exile, but also we have conducted referendum on ground where people are lining up and voting and evidences abound. Are you going to beat that? Nigeria don't know what is hitting them. <laughs> what we are fighting today is brain war. Brain war. And we have outsmarted Nigeria. I want you to understand that after the declaration of the restoration of the independent state of Biafra on the 2nd of December, we will officially communicate Nigeria. And then we will start aggressive campaign globally. For the recognition of Biafra. It is a long overdue. Those that are laughing at us today will no longer laugh at us then. You know that, you know how they are calling off, they are calling off, they were calling me online, Prime Minister, online this and online that, yet they can't let me rest. Yet they are on our page, we post, they are panicking, yet they cannot let us to do our online country and have peace. They are disturbed. Because it is no longer online. We are showing every evidence of controlling the territory of Biafra from exile and then also from the homeland, the facto government. By our various activities, civil disobedience, political activities, by organizing self-referendum voting in Biafra land, and the vote is going on even as I speak. So what else do you need to, to, to know that the Biafra people have rejected Nigeria and they are only loyal to the Biafra government. Their hope of a new beginning and new life is on the government of Biafra. So my people, after the declaration in Finland, what do you expect? What you are going to expect is that we will officially communicate our declaration to the Nigeria state, demanding the recognition and acceptance of the self-referendum. Not only that, we are not sending it to Nigeria State for them to accept. They are never going to accept, and we know that. We will also communicate the African Union, even when we don't even like them. We will also communicate ECOWAS, even when we don't like them. We will officially communicate all these institutions seeking the approval of what we have done in exile, the history that we have done. And we will also officially communicate the United Nations through our international partners. We are not doing all these things for them to agree immediately. No. But believe me, we will release hell on Nigeria. <laughs> After this December 2nd, we will release hell on Nigeria. I want you people to focus on the ORB report where they say, after this declaration, after this self-referendum of Biafra, there is going to be two options. That Nigeria will either issue a political statement that is when we have officially communicated Nigeria demanding the recognition and acceptance of the Biafra self-referendum. Nigeria will either issue a political statement or ignore a political statement and use it and come militarily. We are already used to the military activities of Nigeria State for the past three years. We, only are, we are only going to increase and escalate it. And like I said, we will choose how we find this. So my, my fellow Biafrans, I have a lot to tell you on the upgrade of what respect. So that when you, when you are discussing with people, you can defend yourself and defend the government and defend what we are doing when you have knowledge of what we are doing and what is to come. If you are in argument with all these idiots, you can be able to tell them what we are doing and what we are going to do. So I believe this small clarification and update on the declaration coming 2nd of December have put you in the right track. Immediately after this declaration, what follows next? I am re repeating it again so that it will sink inside the head of even the Dundees. That one, we will write Nigeria officially informing Nigeria of what Biafra have done giving the result of the self-referendum to Nigeria state demanding the recognition of Biafra as an independent state, demanding the acceptance of the self-referendum, also 
demand the withdrawal of every Nigerian military and institution in the Biafra threat. We are not expecting them to do that. But we are going to write them officially so that it will go into, inside, into history book. Two, we will officially write the AU, ECOWAS, and all international organizations informing them of what 50 million Biafrans, over 50 million Biafra. I don't know how many that are going to vote by December or November 8th. Inform them how many millions have voted and what Biafra has spoken and we have spoken and the SI government have declared Biafra and this is the result and this is our demand. Our demand is the withdrawal of every Nigerian institution, accept our declaration, accept our self-referendum, and there will be peace. We will inform the United Nations, using our international consultants and international partners, why our lobbies will be heavily working, ruthlessly engaging in diplomacy at the White House and in Washington, D.C. You don't know what we have prepared. You can never, ever defeat us, Mr. Marami. We come prepared, and I call it multi-dimensional approach. After that, we will begin to approach many countries with the document that we have raised and generated from Finland, from the declaration. It becomes official. Now, we don't have any official document. Now, we do not have any official. Only thing we are doing today is just awareness that the Afra is coming. Everything is awareness. Everything is that we are dying and we don't want to die. We want to defend ourselves. That's what we have been doing for the past three years. So from the 2nd of December, we will officially have a document and officially we begin to demand recognition. Every recognition we demand today, we are not expecting anybody to recognize us. What, why? On, on what basis will it be recognized? There is no basis for recognition. There is no basis today. The only reason we are doing this is to create awareness to those countries and those offices. And we have done that. After 2nd of December, we will have official declaration, official consent of the Biafra people. And then we will have the reason to demand for the recognition from the United Nations, from every country in the world. And my fellow Biafrans, let me also inform you that one African country already offers us a recognition as of today. And you will know it in days to come. We have gotten recognition from all African countries. And those who call us their friend will extend our friendship and our hand of friendship to them. Biafra is the light of Africa. My fellow Biafrans, I welcome all of you to question and answer. I will be addressing some of your questions, but now you know at least some things to answer to those who do not know nothing and don't care to know. The roadmap to the independence of Biafra from 2nd of December 2024. I welcome question and answer. The media team and the communication ministers and deputy, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, PM. Thank you, Biafra people. I don't know if my voice is coming out clear because the network is blocked. Yeah, your voice, your voice is good. Yeah, All right. Good to... Okay, my wonderful people, I don't hear more. The voice the people are just finished hearing is the voice of Simon Epa, the BG Prime Minister. He don't give the lay down on uh, what is going to take place on and after the declaration of the United States of Biafra, which is a USB. And uh, according to the title of this message, it is update on declaration of Biafra 02-12-2024. And that is where we all stand. So I would like you to do me a favor. Please like, share, comment, and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos coming your way. When I don't hear everything from the horse's mouth. When I don't hear how the thing take be. And I don't hear the whole plans that have been put in place so that this declaration will be a successful one at that. And many other countries, I mean, countries upon countries have already pledged to confirm and uh, uh, support the different declaration and also to do what? To acknowledge them as an independent state. Our, and our sovereignty will be surely secured. So have a nice day, my people. Until we come again, Kemesiano.